Hey guys, Perrin here, and in this lesson we are going to talk about how to create a good content strategy from the keywords you find. Mostly, we're going to be talking about site architecture. That's not the only part of a content strategy. Uh, we're going to talk about the other couple parts at the end. Mostly, we're going to be talking about site architecture, though, because I think it's the most difficult and the most important. Um, so, most of the time when I do these lessons or when we do these lessons, what we like to do is do the actual work in front of you. It's a tiny bit different for content strategy because mapping out an entire site or doing a whole bunch of actual keyword research and organizing those keywords is quite a bit of work. So for now, I'm just going to give you as close an approximation as I can, um, but still let you see how I actually do the work. So if you see the tab at the bottom, you can probably uh, see that there are three different methods I like to use when I'm doing content strategy or when I'm first trying to map out a site or even when I'm using keywords to add to an existing type. I'm going to go through all three of those and then at the end I'm going to briefly talk about the other stuff you need for a good content strategy. So the first strategy, the first method is just to let the keywords sort themselves. This is a strategy I will use if I am brand new to a niche, if I have no idea what type of products they are, if I have no idea who the influencers are, if I don't know which questions are being asked. Usually what I'll do is start with, I'll just brainstorm as many seed keywords as I can or find as many seed keywords as I can, which is in the previous video. Um, find as many good keywords as I can, filter them maybe by competition level or difficulty. And then just see if there are any patterns within those keywords. How are they organizing themselves, right? I like to do this in two ways. Uh, the first is to organize them by keyword types. The reason this is important is you need a good balance of keywords for most sites with a couple of exceptions that really aren't important, right? You don't want to have um, too many commercial keywords because then your site might be thin or not useful. You don't want to have too many say social keywords uh, there are social sites that work but for our purposes if you have all social keywords and you don't have a lot of money to spend on social you might not make any money right uh, similarly if you have all informational keywords then you might not be getting commissions from commercial keywords right so the first thing I like to do is organize them by types and I just color code them just to make sure I have a good editorial balance and to see where the gaps are. Do I need more social keywords? Do I need more informational keywords? Am I not finding any epic or skyscraper opportunities? That sort of thing. The other thing I like to do, the second part of this equation, is to start brainstorming and organizing these keywords into possible categories. These don't have to be set in stone. These are just guesses based at a quick glance, the keywords that I'm finding. And when you're going through these, you might also come up with or see opportunities for different types of categories you can use. Um, but I, I've gone ahead and uh, looked at the first few keywords in this list. And again, all this data is fictional. Um, but you can see that fitness tracker, I think, is a piece of fitness equipment. So I've color coded it commercial and put it in my gear category. Um, and you can see a few similar keywords. Fitness quotes and fitness motivation, uh, I, I actually had to add a category for because I didn't expect to see those types of keywords when I was doing a little bit of initial keyword research, right? So I added the category for motivation, something I didn't expect, but I think it could be a cool category. And I color coded it blue because I think that would do very well on social. And there are a few other examples here. So pull up workout, I would put into body weight because that would be good in a body weight fitness category and pull up program. I put under Epic because I think that would make a really good guide. The general idea here though, is just to find a whole bunch of keywords and then start organizing them by keyword type and the possible categories. If you just do that, you can usually start to see a couple of good ways to take all these keywords and organize them into silos uh, or categories on your site. So that's the first way I like to do it. Um, it's usually best for niches that you're totally unfamiliar with, but it can work in some others too. So the second method is predetermined silos. I use this one uh, in two circumstances. One, I already know what I want my site to look like. Um, and that usually happens if, say, I know there's a product I really want to promote. 
uh, or a couple products I really want to promote, or I'm just passionate about one area or a couple different areas, or I already know the market and I have a good idea for what these categories should be. Um, the other reason I might use this is if I already have a site and there are already categories and there are already silos, right? So in this example, I've broken this up into a category slash silo and then I found keywords based on that silo and um, organized them according to their data, right? In this example, you can kind of see that you might be thinking about your content strategy first and finding keywords to support your categories and silos, whereas in this example, you're finding keywords first and then supporting them uh, with your types and your categories. So it's reverse. Here you find the keywords first. Here, in most cases, you're going to set out a structure first, find the keywords later. Um, let's imagine that we're starting a bodyweight fitness site like we were in the first example. I know on ClickBank there is a popular handstand course. That might be something that I want to promote. So I could brainstorm keywords for that course or for um, articles in which I think I can promote this course. So maybe how to do a handstand, handstand benefits, handstand workout, handstand progression, handstand course, and you might have the specific name of the course and then a review of it, right? So I've got a silo, I know there's something I wanna promote, and then I'm trying to find good low competition keywords in which it would make sense to promote this course. The other category here is slightly more general. So it's just home fitness education. So this might include stuff like body weight fitness workout, how to work at home, that sort of thing, more educational, more informational. I'm using this to attract uh, less targeted traffic, but more of it and make my blog a useful resource, possibly make some money with some display ads, whatever. And then here I've got a fitness gear silo. So uh, home gym, ring reviews, top 10 pull up bars, the sorts of high commercial intent keywords you could put, you could use to either sell products on an e-commerce store or maybe through Amazon Associates, something like that. And then lastly, and these are all keywords that I'm measuring with certain types of data. Volume, the CPC, and the keyword competitiveness. I use Longtail Pro for this. You could use any tool that gives you a difficulty score. Um, so I'm this first section here are keywords for which I care about these sorts of numbers. I also have a section when I'm doing this type of content and strategy uh, for social posts, right? So for social posts, I may not necessarily care about a keyword. It's good to target some keyword, but it's not really what I'm looking. It's not the most important thing to me. So here I'll brainstorm titles. I will select a channel that I think it would be good on a score using the co-schedule headline analyzer, and then influencers I might be able to contact uh, to help promote that piece. So to recap real quick, in the first example, I'm letting the keywords organize themselves, just trying to see patterns emerging. In this one, I'm starting with predetermined silos and seeing if I can find good keywords for each silo. Um, and then the third one, is splitting commercial content and informational content. So this is a more general strategy. It's slightly simpler, um, but it's what I used to create my current site. This is not optimal, uh, really, but the big advantage of this is that it splits two different types of keyword research. It uses tools like Longtail Pro or Market Samurai uh, to find commercial intent keywords because that's what those tools are best at and then it uses competitor reverse engineering to find informational and educational keywords there's no social component to this but you could uh, do some reverse engineering with social using buzzstream or something this is just what i've done with the strategy so far so the idea here is to find commercial keywords 
find informational keywords and then plug them into your site in whatever categories you think make sense as you go. So you could feasibly combine it with something like this one where you have predetermined silos or you could find a bunch of informational keywords, a bunch of commercial keywords and then let them sort themselves. So this is something you can do with either method but the idea here is to split your commercial keywords and your informational keywords and social keywords if you want. Um, the main advantage here is to make sure that you have a good editorial balance and to find really strong keywords from competitors and really strong commercial keywords. So this is what I use to map out my first site. I found a bunch of commercial keywords first and then I found a bunch of in a bunch of informational keywords later and I mostly constructed the categories while I was on the site seeing what would make sense. Um, the major downside is the categories typically aren't as specific as they might be if you were doing something like a predetermined silos tactic but it still works fine um, most of the time general categories uh, can work just as well and you can always change them right so um, the last thing I want to talk about here well I guess let's re recap real quick so first strategy is let the keywords sort themselves Start with predetermined silos is the second strategy, and then use a, a commercial and informational split is the third strategy, and this one you can really combine with the other two. Let's talk real quick about the other components of a content strategy. So site architecture and mapping out a site are uh, important for a content strategy. They're not the only parts. There are two other parts to a content strategy, in, in my view. Uh, the first one is sourcing your content and having a way of paying for it so maybe you're hiring a freelancer maybe you are hiring an agency maybe you are spending your own time creating content uh, whatever it is you have to have a plan for sourcing your content because if you don't then content doesn't get created and your site goes nowhere so you have to have a plan for that that's part of your content strategy um, and then you also have to have an, an editorial calendar. So you need to know when stuff is going to be posted after it's written. The reason I'm not talking about these very much is because this is a keyword lesson and the part of content strategy that really relates to keyword research is site architecture and, and mapping out sites. Um, so these are just things to keep in mind. Other than that though, this is how I prefer to do my content strategy. There are lots of ways to do it. But from a keyword focused approach where you're starting with keywords or where you're doing SEO and are um, really putting keywords at the forefront of your strategy, these are three ways I've found that work for me. So give these a try and uh, certainly let me know if you have an idea.